This is the module of Enterprise Architecture course in which we are going to cover the basics and key definition of Enterprise Architecture field of study. In order to get the feeling about the importance of Enterprise Architecture as a discipline, let us consider how complex the modern managerial tasks are. Let us consider a reorganizational project of a manufacturing enterprise. Imagine you have to implement a number of changes in the structure of business. Normally, the starting point would be technological process. You have to change the baseline of company process. This will be followed by re-engineering of business processes, which means changing how the process runs, sometimes changing the owner and the key resources. Business processes re-engineering is normally linked to redesign of organizational structure of the company, the department's functionality and information flows. The process's performance can be also digitalized with implementation of information systems. We might have to implement new software or change the existing. Software changes might also lead to switching database management system or even infrastructural changes in terms of hardware. This chain leads to two main questions. What else and how to control complexity? By complexity, we mean fundamental organization of a system and organizational components, including departments, people, software, hardware, and other. Internal and external relationships. Basic principles of the organization to guide the design. All these points summarize the complexity of any organizational project, which might be linked to information technology or not. And here we come to the question why to use enterprise architecture. If we consider enterprise architecture as a tool for business analysis and development, we shall recognize that it provides a holistic view of the enterprise. This means that EA as a tool will help to avoid local optimization with individual domains. Though there are even more in internal and external factors which require a complex approach. The key internal factor to use enterprise architecture is the needs of business and IT alignment. Those who are experienced in software projects would probably admit that sometimes software is implemented just to be implemented. This is crucial for successful digitalization. IT have to solve business tasks. IT strategy has to fit business strategy. Top management has to support this idea on strategic level and execution level. Organizational structure and business processes have to be integrated with IT infrastructure to cre create a pure digital enterprise. Moving on to external factors, it can be admitted that these factors are not obvious. Sometimes regulatory framework requires clear processing of company development goals and strategy in order to be competitive. Companies would struggle without a specific tool in described environment. Now, when we understand why enterprise architecture can be needed, let us move back and try to understand how it evolved. All this came from information systems implementation and the question of its planning. Complex software cannot be implemented straightforward. This is quite obvious. The idea of deliberate information systems planning is far from new. Early planning approaches proposed various considerations on how to design corporate information systems based on organizational strategy, data flows between departments, suppliers and orders, critical successful factors, management information requirements. One of the first concepts called business system planning or BSP methodology was initiated by IBM in the 1960s. The first edition of BSP, which you can see in the picture, resembles many important aspects of modern enterprise architecture approaches. We start from business processes definition, skipping one and three of which are initiation. We analyze the current information technology and work with stakeholders. We move further to recommendations development. And quite soon you will see that modern approaches have the same basics. Further, BSP evolved into the early enterprise architecture approaches, which were proposed by Spivak and Hill. They actually paid more attention to technical aspects of EA, but already started describing current and future states and planning implementation plan. Later, on the modern approaches appeared and one of the most widespread is TOGAF. The standard focuses on baseline and target architecture, covering different domains and being iterative in nature. 
This means that its ultimate goal is to plan and manage corporate development in business and technology domains. TOGAF, which we use today, has actually appeared in 2011, while the very first mention of enterprise architecture notation was in 1987 by John Zachman. So, before we move on, let us summarize. 1960s BSP emergence, 1980s or 90s the first EA works appears, and in 2010s the modern EA. Here is how Zachman EA looks like. This is one of the first representations of enterprise architecture. Originally, it is called Zachman Taxonomy. It provides a formal and structured way of viewing and defining an enterprise. The ontology is a two-dimensional classification schema. In columns, we have what, how, when, who, where, and why. In rows, we have digitalization level. In cells, we have different types of models which reflect these two dimensions. For example, for the contextual level, we have lists business goals of, or for why, business processes for how, and so on. The models are just examples. They are not regulated strictly, but have to reflect the enterprise structure. Now, here is TOGAF standard structure. This is one of the modern representations of EA. Here, we have got two baseline elements. EA structure on the left and architecture development method or ADM on the right. EA structure has five levels. The top one is business architecture, which defines requirements and drives information architecture. This information architecture has to be supported by software, which is information systems architecture. This defines the data, requires and further, further specific software and hardware. ADM supports analysis of current state of architecture and its development with a number of steps, which are all interrelated with requirements management. We will cover TOGAF standard in more details throughout the whole course. Now we need to emphasize its important difference from Zachman. The most important element of TOGAF is ADM and the design structure. TOGAF is originally designed to manage company development. It helps to model the enterprise in dynamics. And this aspect is one of the most important characteristic of any tool in today's rapidly changing world. To move further, it is important to study the key definitions. Among those are enterprise architecture, uh, architecture framework, architecture models, information technology or IT, modeling, baseline architecture, target architecture. Please find them in your lecture notes and check carefully before moving the next module. 